And here are the assignments. The main task in this course will be to write nine essays. So my goal is to help you write these nine essays. For those of you in the ELCA candidacy process, my hope is that these essays can be essays that you can draw on as you write your various endorsement and approval essays. I hope the same thing for those of you from other denominations. So these essays give you an opportunity to integrate your thoughts on the various topics that we're discussing in this course. Each essay has to be at least a thousand words. I don't care how long it is, you can go as long as you wanna go, but it has to be at least a thousand words. So I'm gonna evaluate your essay on the following criteria. You will notice that there is a, a guide um, a grading guide, and essentially the grading guide consists of these criteria. One, that you explain and interpret the course material on the topic assigned. Two, that you assess and appropriate that material as you develop your own working theology. And then finally, I'm gonna look for the fact that you have a thesis statement that you are effective in communicating your point and that again that you meet the minimum word requirement so these are the criteria the two main criteria are the first or the first two criteria are the two main criteria one you need to demonstrate that you've understood the course material but two you need to integrate that course material into your own emerging working theology now now, I don't, I don't think that you're going to agree with everything this course in this course, partly because I'm presenting you with differing perspectives. But so it's not as though you have to agree with everything that's presented to you in this course, but you do need to demonstrate that you've read the material and then you need to show that you can in fact integrate that material into your own emerging working theological understanding of things. So the first three unit essays essentially deal with the first three topics um, that we're gonna deal with in that first unit. So one, the first essay is gonna deal with Jesus in the Gospels. The second essay is going to deal with Paul's Christology. And then the third essay is going to deal with how the, how the Old Testament informs the Christian formation of creeds. Then in the Unit 2 essays, you're going to have one essay on the controversies that led to the formulation of what's called the Chalcedonian formula. This is the classic formula dealing with the person of Christ. Then you're going to have an essay on classical ways of understanding the work of Christ. You'll have an essay on Luther's proclamation of Christ. And finally, an essay on recent developments in Christology. So essentially, this second unit is going to help you address the themes discussed in the second unit. And then finally, your unit three essays will consist of two essays. In the eighth essay, you're going to bring together the discussion of the church and the reign of God. So how does God form the church? in order to enact God's reign in the world. And then finally, the final essay is where you will bring together the course material in order to answer Jesus' question to Peter, who do you say that I am? And here, here is where you will bring together all of the course material in order to address that central question. Now, to prepare you to write those essays, if you can think of a kind of backward design. So the goal is for you to write those nine essays. But to prepare you for that, you're going to write 10 blogs, i.e., since there are 10 weeks in the course, every week of the course, you're going to write a blog. And a blog is essentially your attempt to grapple with what you've learned that week. I don't care how you write the blogs. 
Um, the main purpose is simply for you to integrate and wrestle with. Remember, you're preparing to write that essay. Each blog must be at least 300 words. They can be longer. Then you're going to give responses to one another. And the purpose for these responses is not simply to agree or disagree or to say, I really like what you said or I disagree with that. The purpose is rather to engage your classmates so that they can think more deeply in what they have talked about in their blog. The goal is for you to help one another wrestle with themes theologically and engage one another with this material. Now you have two choices for engaging in this kind of um, response to one another. Uh, my hope is that you will decide as a group, as a small group, you've all been assigned to small groups, whether on the one hand you want to do a 45 minute Zoom conversation. This is where you have to decide on a time when you're going to meet every week together where the four of you will meet every week and um, you need to meet by Saturday and then you need to have a person in your group post um, a, a record of your conversation. So that's one option. If you can't find a time to meet and if you, you can't figure out how to work that out, then you can simply write um, where you each write a 75 word written response to each one of your classmates. Um, DJ, our TA, is going to be responding weekly to your blogs. So you will have a weekly response. I will also read your blogs. I just will not respond to them, but I will read your blogs because I want to know what's going on. I want to know how you're integrating the material. But DJ is going to be the one who actually responds to your weekly blogs. Here are some guidelines for your blogs and responses. Each online blog is, serves as a step to help you clarify what you want to write about in your essay. You will then respond to your group mates blogs either through a written response or in a Zoom conversation. In all your posts and responses or Zoom conversations, your goal is to clarify your own ideas, offering reasons for what you say drawing on the course material, but also to help others clarify their ideas. So you want to engage in respectful and critical engagement with one another, with curiosity and an openness to changing your mind if necessary. Overall, you want to use this opportunity of writing the blogs and responding as a way to develop your own and your group mates sense of a working theology. Now here are some guidelines for Zoom conversations if your group decides to do this. Every time you meet, go around the circle and make sure everybody gets to talk. Okay, I don't want people dominating these Zoom conversations. Make sure everybody has to talk and speaks to the question for up to two minutes. So go around, let everybody talk. And you can pass if you want to, but make sure you give everybody a chance to talk. Maybe you give some silence between each speaker. The silence helps people to ponder what was just said. And then after everyone has spoken, then you can enter into a free space for a dialogue. And then I also remember, I've also asked that you have, you assign somebody each week to be the scribe who writes down, now be sure to share this load among you throughout the semester so that one person doesn't get stuck with this, but have a scribe simply write down notes of what you said because I want to know I'm a kind of in your face prof I want to know what you've actually what you I'm really curious I want to know what you find interesting I want to know how you're grappling with this material so make sure you have a scribe who reports on what you said plus you're going to want to have notes on what you said because you might want to draw on your conversation when you actually get to writing your essays and here are some basic agreements for your Zoom conversations. Um, make these agreements before you start your conversations. Make sure that everybody abides by them. Speak for yourself. Use I statements. Be practice respect in speaking and listening. 
accept the fact that other people are going to think differently than you. Be brief in your comments on our time frames. Don't try to interrupt one another. Try not to interrupt. Listen carefully, especially when some somebody says something that's hard to s accept. Suspend judgment. Respect confidentiality. Okay, basically what you say in your Zoom, especially if it's of a personal nature, stays in the Zoom conversation. Um, and then allow people to pass if they're not ready to to, uh, to speak. So these are just really helpful um, helpful guidelines that'll help you throughout all of your seminary conversations. And here's a weekly rhythm for the course. Um, Monday and Tuesday, do the hymn, meditate on the biblical text, do the readings, and listen to the video lectures. Then by Wednesday at noon, post your blog on that week's topic. Then by Friday at noon, post responses to your classmates, either the written response or by Saturday, have your, um, by Saturday, have your Zoom conversation with one another. And then at the end of each week, I would recommend that you either complete the essay topic that was assigned for that week, either complete that essay or at least get it started so that you don't have to cram at the very end. Because at the end of each unit, that's when you're going to post your essays on the due date, which are usually either on a Monday or on a Tuesday at noon. So I'm looking forward to reading your blogs and your essays, and I'm looking forward to seeing you get into a good rhythm in this course. I'm hoping that you will have good group conversations in the past. People have really found their, their group mates to be very stimulating. So I hope you will have a rich time in this course. Please feel free to contact me, even if it's an online course. I want to be an in-your-face prof. So contact me if you have any questions or issues. Remember, if you have the question, somebody else does as well. All right, thank you.